Well, thank you. I was, I was going to make a joke about this feeling like, like old times because I see the back row Baptists have showed up. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, we have lots of announcements today, so I want to get, get right to it with that. Uh, there will be uh, some, yes, happy anniversary to Bill and Marion today. That's so, our ministry of the month, um, we're really focusing on our daily bread this month, and uh, invite you to um, support them with your prayers and your offerings. We know it's, that it's only with you and your support that we've been able to share the good news is what they write and I think that what I see when you guys are engaging in these things is your faith walk is really um, supported well and the conversations I have with people who are regularly using their daily bread are fun because they'll come to me and they'll say Pastor Jeff what you said this week really lined up with the daily bread and and that's not my doing that's Holy Spirit's doing and uh, so you'll find that these things really do um, help you engage with Scripture and engage with prayers well. So I invite you to, to pray for the ministry and to support them as you're able. October is our um, Stock the Pantry um, challenge, where we're hoping to collect 50 cans of uh, pasta. We're, um, boy, you guys really need to step up. Um, looking... <laughs> think we're going to make it, but keep it coming. Um, keep it coming. Uh, some pasta sauce, and if you wish to bring fruits and vegetables, um, we're going to do that on the last Sunday of October, and then we'll take everything over. And you can still bring your regular stuff. If you see the things on sale that, that you know the food bank needs, um, put it in the basket out back, because we're still trying to support them with other things as well. On October 30th, um, we are going to have the final day of our blessing table have you guys enjoyed the blessing table? Yeah. yeah, me too. It's been a really neat thing for us to share things with one another. Um, so the items on the table will be, will be donated at that time. So if there's been something there and you're like, well, I'll just, I'll let somebody else get that. Well, maybe that's there for you. So take it, feel free. Um, thank you so much for loving others with your, your works and, and the things from your garden and the things that you've shared. Uh, tonight, there will be an induction service held at the uh, Wilmot Christian Fellowship Center um, at 6.30 for Pastor Chris Wickens, and um, hoping that uh, some folks from around the area will be there to support them as they enjoy that special thing that it is to receive a new pastor and celebrate what God is doing there in that church. October 16th, uh, as well tonight or this afternoon at 3 p.m. at the Clementsville United Church. There'll be a worship service of praise through music with hymns and gospel music, choir music, and others. All are welcome. There'll be a time of fellowship afterwards and a time for a spot to make free will donations. Everything is going to the Adult Residential Center in Bridgetown. So they wanted us to announce that. So if you're into that and you think you've got time to go, I would encourage it. The ADBA will meet on Saturday in Annapolis at the First Baptist Church in Annapolis Royal. And um, we're, that's the council meeting, but all are invited to that if you have an interest in um, the, what's going on with the ADBA right now. I would encourage you to come. And then on the 28th in Annapolis, we're going to have a, a night of music, prayer, and fellowship. Um, just a coming together of the, the ADBA churches um, to really focus on the love that God has shared with us and our, u our unity um, really is, is what I'm hoping for. So I would encourage you to uh, put that one on your calendar as well if you can be there on that evening. Uh, October 30th in Wilmot, there's gonna they're going to have a concert with Garth and Leanne McKay. Um, they're excited about that. I know Chris is posting about it. He's excited about these folks coming. Um, so if you're able to go on that evening for that, you might just find something you really enjoy. 
this week we had our very first Coffee Plus here at the CFC. Who was here for Coffee Plus? Raise your hands. Right on. A good turnout. It was, uh, I would say, it was a smashing success for First Of. And I look forward to more of those. Bonnie's already, she's excited. She says, this is the best thing that's happened since the exhibition. Um, <laughs> so, and, and listen, knowing Bonnie, that's big praise. <laughs> that's big praise. So we're excited uh, about Coffee Plus and the opportunity for us to just uh, come together and share in one another's lives. And this final announcement is to just let you guys know that there's some stuff happening here at the facility over the coming weeks. For the next six weeks, there is a job training program that is being run by a group called Literacy Nova Scotia. And it's working with people who uh, want to become employed. And it's helping to give them the skills that they may need to um, enjoy entering back into the workforce. And um, so for the next six weeks, there's gonna be a school happening here. And um, it's taking place from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. most days, but the days that we're having our things, they won't be here. It's, a, it's an easy workaround. Um, but I wanted you to know that this facility, um, God has kind of given us this opportunity to engage with a community in this way. And the individuals who are successful going through this program have already been promised jobs at the um, Robichaux uh, fish plant if they want them. Um, they're already being made available for them. So it's, it's a, a leg up uh, for folks and it's a way that we can um, impact our community in a way that I really hadn't we prayed about something like this, but hadn't imagined what it would be. So God really showed up um, providing this opportunity. So I offer that as encouragement. And um, it's going to, you know, it, it'll, it'll create some, some stress at some points, but that's okay. We can handle that. So um, you want to do a call to worship and open this thing up? Oh, oh yes. My apologies. Vera. Uh, Beals has passed away and the family wanted me to um, let the church know that there will be a funeral happening on Wednesday at 2. Now I say this, this is what the plan is for Wednesday at 2. I haven't seen it from the funeral home yet so I encourage you to keep your eye on the obituary to confirm that time and date because you know, sometimes what we hope for and what really happens aren't necessarily there, but we wanted to put that out for you um, so that you can kind of mark it, make note of it, and then keep an eye for the confirmation. So, um, so yeah, I encourage you to, um, if you're able, to come and um, be there for the family at that time as well. Now are we ready? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's, let's do this. Okay. Let's do this. <laughs> I'd like to make an announcement before I start. Uh, there's a little, little bit of a gathering. No more announcements. They can't bear it. Shh. <laughs> there's a little gathering after church or for coffee and cake to help celebrate somebody's young birthday. So if you would like to stay and have a cup of tea. Okay, the call to worship this morning. It's, but let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. Let us bow our heads in prayer. God, no matter what we face today, we don't want to lose sight of the fact that you love us and sent your son to die for us. Let that truth change our perspective today. Please forgive us for our mistakes we make that pulls us away from you and continue to show how we can live a life that honors you. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Our first hymn is 603, I believe, or 630. Please stand and sing with us. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. What in
Our Old Testament is Isaiah 59, 9 to 17. So justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We look for light, but all is in darkness. For brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, feeling our way like men without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if we were as if it were twilight among the strong. We are like the dead. We all growl like bears. We moan mournfully like doves. We look for justice, but find none. For deliverance, but it is far away. For our offenses are many in your sight, and our sins testify against us. Our offenses are ever with us, and we acknowledge our iniquities. Rebellion and treachery against the Lord, turning our backs on our God, fomenting oppression and revolt, uttering lies our hearts have conceived. So justice is driven back and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Truth is nowhere to be found. And whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his only arm worked salvation for him, and his, his own righteousness sustained him. He put a righteousness as his he put on righteousness as his breastplate, and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in cloak. May God bless the reading of his word. Amen. A passage takes us into our time of communion. We're going to sing the first two verses of Alas and Did My Savior Bleed. And I'll invite Bonnie and Darlene to come forward as we sing those two. Please stand. We'll now join together in obedience to our Lord's command to share in the Lord's Supper. As I say, each month we do this not because we must, but because we may. We do this because of our love and our devotion to Jesus. We do this because we want to follow his commandments. We do this because we know that our sin and our frailty puts us in need of God's mercy, God's grace, and God's help. We do this so that we can grow closer to Him and closer to one another. As we prepare to partake in communion today, be reminded that we are taking part in something sacred and something special. This is for all disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ who have confessed their sins before Him and profess him their Lord and Savior. This is the Lord's table for the blessing and the fellowship of all disciples. Let's pray. Lord God, we, we thank you 
Father, we thank you for Jesus. And Jesus, we thank you for your perfect sacrifice. We thank you, God, that we can each month uh, remember what it is that you have done for us. But Lord God, we, we pray that we don't just remember at these times when we set time aside for it, but we remember day in and day out, hour by hour, moment by moment. Lord God, we thank you for the salvation you have provided for us, made available to us. And Lord, we pray that those who don't yet know you may come to know you, may come to sit at this table with us celebrating you and your love, remembering all that you have done, knowing the life that there is in you. Lord God, bless us as we enter into this time together to draw nearer to you, Lord, and to draw nearer to one another. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he took that bread and he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So as we join in this time of remembrance, let us give thanks for that bread as well. So Bonnie, would you offer a prayer for the bread today? Gracious Father, we are humbled in your presence and we're thankful for the physical ways that you teach us, especially when you are clothed with a human body and the word became flesh and lived among us. How amazing. This small piece of bread reminding us of indescribable sacrifice, amazing. As we take this broken bread, let us sense your unending love that is shared by all who will receive it. Forever we are changed by your love in the presence of your majesty. Mm. Amen. Amen. Let us now eat of this bread in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for us. In the same way that night, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. He said, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So now, as often as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So Darlene, would you please offer a prayer for the cup today? Lord, we praise you this morning that you are the giver of life and forgiveness. We think about the sacrifice and pain you suffered on the cross as your blood was shed for us. As we drink from this cup, may we experience your saving grace and may your love flow within us. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, this is my blood of the covenant which was poured out for the many, for forgiveness of sin. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful. Let's pray. Lord God, we do, we do thank you for the body and the blood. We thank you for the sacrifice that was made. We thank you for the love that, that you extend to us. We thank you that we can experience this love and remembering your sacrifice in that way. Lord God, be with us today as we celebrate your love for us and remember those whom you have placed in our path this we pray in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing the last two verses of Alas and Did My Savior Bleed.
for pastoral prayer. Philippians chapter 4 has some great words for us. Verses 6 and 7 say, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which extends, exceeds everything. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. So let's bow together and enjoy the peace that we have in Christ. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, all things seen and unseen, you have placed us here in this special spot in your creation. You call us together. You draw us to love one another, help one another, be with one another. You command us to look after creation. Your works, all that we see in others and around us in creation, it all declares your glory and your splendor. Lord God, we praise you and we thank you. But Lord, we know that we have not lived up to things well. We haven't been good stewards of creation. We haven't been good stewards of friendship. We haven't been good stewards of the love that you have shared with us. And Lord, we humble ourselves before you, but we know that our grief and our pain over these things is only grief and pain. And we thank you for Christ and the blood and the sacrifice that makes our grief and our pain so much more to understand that your son died for us that we may be made right with you to understand that you love us so much that you sent Holy Spirit to dwell in us, to guide us and lead us toward better ways, better stewardship, better love for those around us. Lord God, this is not an easy thing to understand. And that's because maybe we're not supposed to. I thank you for passages of scripture that remind us that you are almighty God and the things you do are out of our reach. So help us to not seek understanding, but to seek confidence in you and your love, confidence in your strength and your might, confidence in your abilities. Lord God, we pray for Vera Beals' family today as they prepare themselves for a funeral on Wednesday, for saying goodbye to a mother, a grandmother, a great-grandmother. Lord God, we pray you give them peace. We pray you surround them with love. You pray, God, that their confidence is in her confidence in you, her knowledge of you, her life given to service. So Lord God, bless them. And Lord, we want to lift prayers today for Mike and Judy upward as both are, are going for procedures this week. We ask God that you be with them, be with their doctors. Give them a speedy recovery, Lord. We think of Shirley this week who's still recovering at home. We pray for he and Linda and I thank you, God, for his friendship and his wonderful spirit. I just pray your blessing upon them, Lord. Others in our church family, God, who are going through difficulties, waiting for procedures, waiting for things to happen, I ask, God, that you be with them and give them strength and courage. Give them peace. I thank you for the encouragers in our church, God. People who seem to have 
such joy and confidence despite the troubles that they share. And Lord, we have many of them in this church that exude that, and I thank you for them. I thank you for the witness that it is to you and your your transforming power, God. I thank you for the way the gospel extends to others through those, those hearts and their words. So Lord, today we bow before you, not worrying about anything, but praying instead about everything. Knowing that you meet our needs. And we thank you, God, for all that you have done. We pray for your peace. We pray for peace that exceeds our understanding, God. We pray for joy in knowing that we don't need to understand. We just have to trust and believe. And your peace will guard our hearts and our minds as we live as Christ Jesus guides us in his ways. In your holy name, amen. So last week, we touched on, we scratched at the surface of the good news. And last week, I said that, that news as N.T. Wright has put it, news is something that has happened as a result of which everything else is different. News is something that has happened that as a result of which everything else is different. And there's lots of things that, that are in the news that make up news that may be not be news. They may not be news because it may talk about something that has happened, but really the result of which is very little difference. But the good news of Jesus Christ, that truly is news. It is the good news of God's love for us. Now, when thinking about it, I want to just remind you of a few things because it's important to understand the backstory of news. The backstory to the good news kind of starts where we were talking a few weeks ago about creation and God creating us. The backstory part one is that God got down in the dirt and pulled together dust and breathed life into us. Folks, that's good news. That is an intimate act. That is an intimate working. When God created the other stuff, God spoke it into into existence. He called it together. But when God created us, he pulled together dust and he breathed life into it. There's a difference. We're made different and we're made in his image. We bear some likeness to God. That is good news backstory part one. We are made by a loving God who did something very special in pulling us together in this way. Now the backstory part two is, is less good news and, and just more news because Adam and Eve did fall to sin. They fell to the temptation and that temptation was really in, it wasn't so much the, the apple that tempted them, Satan, coming before them and tempting them, the, the thing that really, I think, brought about the fall was, was that desire that was in them to know things, to understand things, to see things that only God should know, understand, or see. And we still wrestle with that today. We want to understand everything. I get, I get bogged down in, in these books, these commentaries about Scripture and trying to, to wrap my head around things that, that I just can't understand because it's not for me. When Job was trying to understand his situation, God really had some, some clarifying words for Job. Basically, I'm going to summarize it in saying, Job, there's just some stuff that you're not going to understand. Were you there when I did these things? No, you're not supposed to understand. You're not supposed to understand because it's not for you. I'm not, there's stuff that I'm not supposed to understand. So I can't get caught up 
on those things. But the sin that happened impacted the relationship that God had with Adam and Eve. Their desire to know things, to understand things, to see things that only God could know, understand, and see impacted their relationship. Because you remember that God was coming to the garden on a regular basis. God was visiting them, spending time with them. And God knew immediately when something had gone wrong because God had that relationship and that understanding with them. And because of sin, there was punishment. They were cast from the garden. So backstory part two is that the fall of man, as we call it, brought sin into the equation. It created divide between us and God. Our desire to know things that only God should and can know led to sin, and things have never been the same since. God gave perfection. Do you understand this? God gave perfection. There was, there, was, there was perfectness in His creation. There was perfectness in the relationships. There was perfection in those early times. And then sin came in and messed it up. Complicated things. God gave love. God gave companionship. He gave purpose because He gave, he gave them things to do. He, they were looking after creation. And then they ate of that one forbidden fruit, that one forbidden thing. And it just messed with everything. Because they ate that fruit, everything had to change. This is news. Something happened as a result of which things changed. The things that change is that they're now forbidden from being in amongst that space anymore. They're cast out. And now the world groans under the punishment because our relationship with creation has changed. Now the man has to toil to bring forth his, his food. This is part of the punishment. God banished them from the garden, sent them out to cultivate the ground which had he had made. And then after sending them out, the Lord stationed a mighty cherubim at the east of the garden and he placed a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. You see, something happened and as a result of which, everything changed. But the thing is, even though that's news and it's not good news, even though that's news, and that's backstory part two, God didn't abandon us. God didn't abandon humanity in that. And we've got the Old Testament stories of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Israelites, and the rescue from um, Egypt, and all the ways that God worked in the story of His people, calling them to Himself, calling them to be a, a nation of priests is what He called them to be desiring for them to make him known to other nations. God, even though the, the sin had happened and created this, this tension, God didn't abandon. And God even made promises that he would continue to rescue. Backstory two. Then backstory three is this, this waiting that's happening in the lives of the Jews in the early uh, first century is what we'll call it. There's this anticipation that, that God is going to do something. There's been a long time for them that they did feel kind of abandoned by God. But God did not abandon. And Jesus Christ came, was born, healed, taught, fed people in ways that, that no one could understand, healed people in ways that no one could understand, told stories that people wrestled to understand. But there's no denying that Jesus did these things. He did these miraculous things. He stirred up the world, but not in the way that people were expecting. And you see, Jesus could have been the kind of, the kind of ruler that, that people expected were he not from God. Do you understand, like, there, there were people who were ready to take up arms. It happened 
years before. It happened years later. There were people who were ready to fight for what they believed. But Jesus wasn't calling people to fight. He was calling people to love. And he showed us how to do it. He healed, he fed, he taught, he accepted. Do you remember when he met the woman at the well? Jesus was generous to her, kind to her. She was not somebody who expected that from a Jew. Jesus was doing things in a different way. This is backstory part three. Something happened. Jesus came and was doing things differently. And because of it, something changed. People started to think about God in different ways. Started to believe that the Messiah had come and started to try and reconcile in their minds what that meant. These were Jesus' disciples and his followers. Then Jesus is put on trial on false charges. And Jesus is taken to Pilate and he's sentenced to death. And he dies. But we all know that that didn't last. His death was a full and complete death. And he stayed in the grave for three days. And then he rose. And as we talked about last week, he was seen by many. Paul made a point last week in the scripture passage to make note that Jesus was seen by many. You could ask, is what Paul's saying. You want you want to know this? People are around that can verify it. That's what he's saying. That's how confident he is in the resurrection of Jesus, and that's how confident he wants us and others to be in the resurrection of Jesus. This is the good news. Because that happened, because that happened, everything changed. We now have the ability to approach God in a way different but similar to the way that Adam and Eve related with God. In a very personal, in a very intimate way. We can know Christ. We can experience the indwelling of Holy Spirit. But how do, we, how do we take that and from our day-to-day lives, how do we take that and translate that into lives that are transformed? Well, first I'll say we don't. God does that in us. But how do we open ourselves up to allowing that truth to transform us and work in us? Well, Jesus, in his teaching gave us a tool. And today I want to talk about that tool. And now, this is often a little bit of a tangent, but have you guys ever heard of your, your desert island things? Okay, so, so there used to be a radio show I used to listen to. It was called Desert Island Discs. And the idea was you call in and you tell them, like, if you were stranded on a desert island, what was the one disc CD that you would want to take with you? And so, you know, that was the idea of that show. If you were stranded on on a desert island, what's the one book you would want to take? What's the one thing that you would want to have with you? You know, maybe the book is this one. I would recommend it. I think it could probably get you through. The, The music for me would change week to week. But the one thing that you could take with you that would carry you through that situation. Well, Jesus... I'm going to go out on a limb and say Jesus gave us a desert island prayer. Jesus gave us a prayer for all occasions. And this comes from Matthew chapter 6. Jesus is teaching the disciples. This is part of the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, when you pray, is this where we're starting at 5? Yeah, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in synagogues where everybody can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward you will ever get. But when you pray, 
go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as other people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. Pray like this, Jesus says. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Jesus goes on to say, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. When you fast, don't make it obvious as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that's the only reward they'll ever get. But when you fast, comb your hair, wash your face, then no one will notice that you're fasting except your Father who knows what you do in private and your Father who sees everything will reward you. May God bless this reading of his word. So our our desert island prayer here. Jesus wants his disciples, those that day and, and us, he wants us to understand something. He wants us to understand that if we're gonna engage in this kingdom in a way that's going to impact our lives, we need to approach it first with the right heart. Jesus says, Don't do it publicly like the hypocrites. Don't babble on and on. It's not about looking great while you pray. It's not about saying the right things. It's about being in the right state of heart. State of heart is what I call it. When you pray, he says, don't babble on and on. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. For them, don't be like them, he says. For your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. So let me ask you this, Jesus. Let me ask you this. Why is it important for me to ask for things if my Father already knows? Why? Well, Maybe it's so that I can build some relationship with him. Maybe it's about me going before him, knowing that he wants me to come before him. He wants me to engage in this. He knows it. So why? Because. (laughs) My kids used to say, why why do we have to do this? And the best answer, come up with was because well today here's a because it matters folks yes the father knows but we need to do this we need to bow before him in confidence and here's here's the thing that makes this our desert island prayer jesus says to pray like this he doesn't say that this is the only prayer we need he's saying we can pray like this okay he's saying we need to come to God understanding that God is our Father in heaven. Now for some of us, Father's a complicated thing. Some of us, our Father experience hasn't been that great. For some of us, it's going to be easier than others to engage in the idea of a Father who loves us. I want you to kind of step back from what our experience has been with our earthly fathers and I want you to remember how our Father in heaven, our Creator God, pulled together that dirt, pulled together that dust and breathed life into it so that He could have 
humanity to engage with, to have relationship, to give us charge over his creation, to give us partners to go through life with. This is a loving father who wants good things for those whom he loves. Jesus talks about that too. So our Father in heaven, Jesus says, may your name be kept holy. This is for us to keep his name holy. God's not going to mess it up. We are. So give us the wisdom, God. Give us the strength, God, to live our lives as if you are our Father in heaven, mighty and holy give you the reverence that you deserve that is becoming of you. Jesus says that we can ask for the kingdom to come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is, this is looking forward to when God recreates everything and calls us up and gives us new bodies. This is looking forward to that, but it's also the today heaven that we can experience here and now understanding the holy spirit dwells in us and engages in us in a heavenly way this is both this is understanding that god desires us to have a relationship with his creation and a relationship with one another that is befitting his love for us And we can come before God and ask for the things that we need. Jesus says, ask for the food we need. Ask for the food we need. This This is not asking for the food we want. This is asking for what we need. Understanding that God will meet our needs as Jesus has promised. Forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sinned us against us. How many of you wish that I didn't read that passage today? <laughs> this, is, this has got to be one of the... I, I could spend a lifetime working on this. This is one of the hardest things that there is. And until we come to terms with how we have sinned against God and we have hurt that relationship, we can't begin to grasp the forgiveness that we have received and then turn that into forgiveness for others. And forgiveness for others is complicated. It's not always going to be restoration. I've said this before. There are some people whom we need to forgive whom we should never trust. That's complicated. But can we forgive them? And let that be. Knowing that. Praying for them that that God can do something in their lives to make his name known and glorified. Isn't it cool when God takes somebody who is a down and out horrible sinner and they know they're a horrible sinner and God transforms them into somebody who is proclaiming the gospel and has completely turned their lives around. We've seen these stories. We've heard these stories of people who have, who have come off death row and become great Christians, great people sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and the freedom that they have in Him, the new life that they have in Him. And how those, I remember reading a book once about uh, a guy who forgave someone on death row that had killed his daughter. And that forgiveness transformed that man's life. And, you know, to wrestle with the idea of of being willing to forgive someone who had taken the life of someone precious that you love. Well, folks, our God in heaven lost his son for our sins. That, That was a big act. And we can, we can spend our lives trying to figure this out. We never will. But we have to wrestle with it and, and let it mess with us. Let it humble us. Let it crush us. Let it bring us to tears because it matters. This is an act of a loving father 
giving His one and only Son. This is an act of Jesus loving us, coming to earth, giving us great teachings, healing people, providing food for people. Being there in the mess of the world and being able to walk His walk and do what he needed to do in order to rescue and save all. What's, what's interesting and, and, and hard to, to grasp is, you know, we could, we could ask, why didn't Jesus heal everybody? Why didn't Jesus feed everybody? Why didn't, you know, he's God, he could have. Because? Don't know the answers to some of these questions. God wants us to understand the salvation that he provided will transform us as we engage in relationship with him. When we come down and humble ourselves and pray like this, our Father in heaven, when we come down and understand that God loves us and God has done something in order to transform us and to restore relationship between us and creation, and he desires more, He desires more. He will further restore creation and further restore us. This is is something that has happened that will change everything, but will continue to happen and will continue to change. We need to wrestle with what it is to forgive in order to fully embrace the new life that we have in Christ. That is a fact. And it's something that we can't shy away from. It's something we need to engage with on a daily basis. And it will be harder for some than others. Partner up. You know, when we go swimming, we we used to take the kids swimming, you needed to have a buddy. Get a buddy. Pray together. Choose your buddy carefully. Choose someone who you can trust, someone who can help you talk about the things that you need to talk about, to work it out, to understand that this matters. This is, this is a hinge for people. This is either a sticky hinge that keeps a door closed or a free and easy hinge to move that allows us to enter through that doorway and enter into that new life, that life to the fullest that we can have in Christ. So your Desert Island Prayer, folks, helps us to remember the good news of all the things God has done for us. Remember who God is, that He is our Father in heaven, that He has done some things to help us, that He will provide for our needs, but He does, even though He forgives our sins, He expects us to extend forgiveness to others. This is your Desert Island Prayer. This is the thing that can help us to engage in life to the fullest because through this we engage with God and remember the things that matter to help us to better proclaim the gospel as transformed people here and now. So let's join our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as we have learned it. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So I want to invite the praise team up to sing a song for us.
Now he's got to make some adjustments on the board. Charlene's got a transpose plus two. Already, already done. Already there we go. So we're going to sing Majesty. We sang it last week. <coughs> um, I'm going to let you sit for a little bit, but I am going to invite you to stand part way through so that you can, you can enjoy that. We sing better when we stand, and it's a, it's a true thing. But. So Majesty.
changed by your love in the presence of your majesty lord god we sing and we proclaim your majesty and we pray god that we are forever changed by your love because something has happened and it is good news so lord god bless us today Bless the food we are about to eat. Bless the fellowship we are about to have. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Amen. amen. Thank you, everyone.